Let's talk about some of the differences between how translation happens in prokaryotic cells and how it happens in eukaryotic cells. And I want to focus mainly on the mRNA just before it's ready to be translated. So let's start with our prokaryotic mRNA and let's look at our 5' side first. So we have this yellow part right here and that's the non-coding region. And it's called the non-coding region because the, ribo the ribosome is not actually going to read that part. So that particular sequence of amino acids is not that important. And then after the non-coding region, we have the shine delgarno sequence. And the shine delgarno sequence is the site that the ribosome is going to recognize and bind to. So let's just store a ribosome right over here. This is where the prokaryotic ribosome is going to bind. And then after the shine delgarno sequence, we have another non-coding region. I'm just going to abbreviate it NCR. And then we have our start codon, which is typically AUG. So that tells us to start. And so the ribosome is going to start translating. It's going to read this entire section, put together the corresponding polypeptide chain until it hits the stop codon, which tells it to stop translating. And then we have another non-coding region. Let's look at our eukaryotic mRNA. And so it's pretty similar, but you can see there are some differences. So we'll start with our 5' side first. So you see this red nucleotide right over here. That's the 5' prime cap. And the 5' prime cap is simply a guanine nucleotide. So I'm going to draw a G inside. Guanine. And it's going to have a methyl group somewhere on the molecule. So I'm going to draw a methyl group. And the bond between this guanine and the nucleotide right near it is a bond that's different than the bond you typically find between two nucleotides. And so that's really all the 5' prime cap is. And the 5' prime cap is actually the ribosomal binding site in eukaryotes. So that means that in eukaryotes, the ribosome is going to recognize this particular part and bind to it. So after the 5' prime cap, we have this other non-coding region, which the ribosome is not going to translate. And then the ribosome is going to hit the start codon again, AUG. Tells it to start, and it's going to start translating so it's going to translate this entire section until it hits the stop codon. And then we have another non-coding region. And then we hit something that looks different than what we've seen in the prokaryotic mRNA, so this section with blue nucleotides, and that's called the poly-A tail. And the poly-A tail is a bunch of nucleotides that are all A's or adenines. So I'm going to draw A's inside all of these nucleotides. And the poly A tail is actually pretty long. So it's typically anywhere between 100 and 250 nucleotides long. So that's pretty long. So I didn't exactly draw it to scale. And the purpose of both the 5' prime cap and the poly A tail is to prevent this mRNA from being degraded by enzymes. So it acts as this kind of signal that does not allow enzymes to break it down or degrade it. And so you might be wondering, well, what about prokaryotic mRNA? How come they don't have anything similar to prevent it from being degraded? And the brief answer to that question is that in prokaryotic cells, transcription, that's an R, and translation both happen in the same place. So prokaryotic cells don't exactly have a nucleus. They have this, you know, like cytosol and transcription and translation are happening in the same place. And not only are, are they happening in the same place, but they, they can actually be happening at the same time. So you can have a piece of mRNA that's being formed. And while it's being formed, a ribosome will attach to it and begin to translate it. But in eukaryotic cells, things are a little bit different. So transcription happens in the nucleus and translation 
happens in the cytoplasm where there are ribosomes. And so the mRNA, after it's made, has to travel from the nucleus to the cytoplasm to where the ribosomes are. And so because it's traveling this relatively large distance, it's going to encounter a lot of different things, including enzymes that might break it down. And so it needs this extra protection to prevent it from being damaged in any way. There's one more difference I want to talk about in how translation happens in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and that is what the first amino acid in the polypeptide chain will be. So in prokaryotic cells, the first amino acid in the chain is always formal methionine. And formal methionine is simply the amino acid methionine but with a formal group attached. And in case you don't remember what a formal group looks like, it looks like that. In eukaryotic cells, the first amino acid in, in all the polypeptide chains is simply methionine. And it's interesting to note that formal methionine is actually acts as an alarm system in the human body. So if you had some bacterial cells in your body that were damaged in any way, there would be these formal methionines floating around. And that tells your body that there are bacteria around and it's going to trigger an immune response.